We've looked previously at our chemical synthesis and design processes where we've taken a couple of factors out and focused on a different industrial process that's associated with the industrial uh, with uh, the, each of those different factors and this time we're going to be looking at industrial uses which includes things like pharmaceutical cosmetics cleaning products and fuels so you can see when we start talking about these sorts of things that we've actually looked at a number of processes already that are um, that we've demonstrated in the laboratory on a small scale that can actually be upscaled into an industrial process and things like saponification or esterification fall into that sort of category and so does things like fermentation. So what we want to do this time is focus on one of those processes which is saponification and that is the production of soap. If we do that, then what that allows us to do is to understand the process in a very general term and then to link that back into our industrial use. So we know this is a cleaning product. And we also know that from an understanding of soaps, that's led us to the development of different types of detergents. And those detergents have all sorts of different types of uses. If you think about the number of different things that can be cleaned in your house, uh, and that goes from clothing to yourself, to your dishes, to your floors, uh, all of these are different types of um, washing and um, cleaning, and they do require different sorts of detergents. Some of those we want um, to have high sudsing. Sometimes we don't want the sudsing to be as high. Sometimes we will uh, want something that is smooth or something that smells nice. Uh, we also have to have a look at some of the different things that have been added to each of these in uh, order to change something about either the properties, the way that they clean, um, or the fragrances, the way they smell. And that can also involve things like esterification, where we're producing different fragrances. So there'll be a, a, a particular smell that, that we associate with something that's nice or something that's clean or fresh. One of the important things about uh, industrial use is that we need to look at scaling. So we have previously looked at, say, the Haber process. The Haber process was a process where we were looking at the production of ammonia. Now, that was a reaction, a very successful reaction, very, very good reaction, but it wasn't an industrial process. And it was actually Bosch, Carl Bosch, who industrialized the process, who scaled the process up to the point where it now became industrial. It now became large scale, meant we could produce ammonia on a big um, yield basis, and therefore it became commercially viable. The same sort of thing can happen with the process of saponification, though in this case we're looking at soap production and how it might change for an industrial production of soaps as opposed to a um, just a laboratory uh, demonstration process like the one that we used ourselves. So one of the first things that we notice is that we can make comparisons about how these processes might look uh, in the lab compared to how they might look in a um, in an industrial site. 